Here's a question. Is your favorite photograph color or black and white? Your favorite photograph that you've ever taken? Here's another question. The favorite photograph that exists out there in the world that is yours. Which one? Which, which photographer out there? And what photograph is it that is theirs that you love? And is that photograph color or black and white? Today we're talking a little bit about monochrome. And we're talking about monochrome versus black, not even really monochrome versus color. It's more uh, just a journey into the mastery of black and white photography, how important black and white photography actually is to us creators. And I'm just wondering if you see the world like I do at times in black and white. Now, as we get into photography anatomy, I want to remind you, welcome everybody who's tuning in live. I want you to remind you that photography was invented around 1835, formerly thought 1839. 1839 was the universal year that everyone agreed that photography was invented. But actually, photography was invented in 1835 by William Henry Fox Talbot in the US and Louis Daguerre in France around the same time, both using a completely different process. But the only thing that was the similarity is it was a monochrome process. And as I show you Talbot's very first paper negative, which he made in 1835, the difference between William Henry Fox Talbot and Louis Daguerre, this is the very first photograph that we thought was ever taken. This is view from my office, view from window by William Henry Fox Talbot in 1835. Now, Daguerre's first photograph, Daguerre's first photograph is very famous. You guys should definitely know and recognize this was the very first daguerreotype. And funny enough, the very first photograph of a person because you can see there is a person at the end right here. You'll notice, obviously, that the monochrome process and the black and white photograph is what we're talking about today. But what's rarely known is Joseph Nisifor Nipse, who was Louis Daguerre's assistant, actually made the first photograph long before Talbot or Daguerre. And, <clears throat> excuse me, this is the first ever known photograph. And the thing that is crazy is that Nipse made this photograph in 1826. Fun facts. Now, color photography was invented in the 20th century. And the first practical color photography process was known as autochrome and was introduced in 1907 by the Lumiere brothers. And the Lumiere brothers, believe it or not, made this photograph, which was made in 1907, which is insane, 1907 the first real color photography process started. Now, black and white photography and black and white, black and white photography remained the primary medium for capturing photography for a significant portion of the 20th century, literally all the way up to the 60s. And there was so many different reasons for black and white to be just the main thing. People would process on their own, getting it. It was inexpensive and definitely if you had the means to have a Kodak Brownie camera, you could make pictures. Photography was black and white and that's all it was up until we'll call it the mid 50s. Now, 
the transition from predominantly black and white photography to color it it was like there had to be technolo technological ad advancements you had to be able to afford color film and processing and also artistic preferences you know literally color photography didn't surpass black and white in its use until the middle of the last century so black and white still continues to hold a special allure and a special appeal for photographers and i'm just going to touch on a little bit of the reasons why if you can imagine black and white is visually captivating you know and there's a timelessness to black and white photography black and white images have that classic and a timeless quality that evokes a sense of nostalgia it's like depth and it has an emotional impact when you remove color it allows the viewers to focus on the composition the lighting the subject matter which conveys almost a more profound and powerful message another reason that black and white photography is so powerful there's such a simplification and focus when you remove color from the equation it simplifies the image and it allows your viewer to focus on the essential elements of the photograph by eliminating the distractions that are caused by vibrant hues black and white photography can emphasize leading lines shape texture and patterns resulting in a more graphic and striking photograph you're also able to enhance contrast and convey mood without the distraction of color black and white photography excels in emphasizing contrast it creates a dramatic and a moody effect and it enhances the overall atmosphere and storytelling within the photograph shadows and highlights become more pronounced adding a depth and a dimension to the overall image you're also able to highlight form and texture by stripping away color black and white photography emphasizes the form the shape and the texture of the subject it allows for a heightened appreciation of details and subtle nuances that might have been overlooked if it was a color photograph it also encourages the viewer to see the world in a different way our eyes don't see in black and white so giving the world our photographs in monochrome makes the viewer focus on the underlying structure and the textures within your frame and of course artistic expression black and white offers a unique artistic expression and interpretation of the world it allows us as photographers to play with tones to play with contrast and various grayscale values to create visually striking and thought-provoking pictures the absence of color encourages photographers to rely on composition light and shadow to create their creative vision it's important to know that the appeal of black and white photography versus color photography is subjective and it can vary depending on our own personal preferences our own in subject matter our intended message both color and black and white photography have their own strengths and are both valuable tools when it comes to your toolbox as a professional photographer so let's get into my next favorite section which we call mastery now composition light there's so many important angles when it comes to black and white photography let me just share this with you
composition, lighting. You can just see how important composition and lighting is with black and white photography. You see nothing but what's within the frame. You can remove distractions and really focus on your composition. You can see how much line plays, form, shapes, repetitive patterns, textures, all these play together in order to create visually compelling images. You can also see lighting. Like if it's an overcast day, if it's moody, if it's dark, you oftentimes shy away from color photography, but with black and white photography, it almost makes your photographs sing. You can see clouds and how powerful clouds are within that black and white space. Tonal range. The amazing part of black and white, and when you think about tonal range from completely black to completely white in a photograph, there's so much play that you can do when it comes to the black and white photograph. Using highlights, using shadows, using silhouettes, creating deep, rich midtones, using contrast, playing with exposure, all of these things, leading line, all create visual interest. And photography, it's for us. We do it in order to satisfy our own personal needs as photographers. But you can see by adding strong black and white imagery into your photography, it just gives an extra depth. I know it's 2023 and I do know that color photography dominates. It dominates every aspect of our lives, but throw some black and white into your life. Throw some black and white in there. Try to shoot monochrome on the camera. Shoot monochrome raw when you go out there. Later on, we're gonna talk a little bit about processing techniques and some things you can do on the back end to make color photographs black and white, when to choose a photograph to make black and white. But as we look at this beautiful, beautiful slideshow, as every episode, I'm trying to inspire you. I'm trying to re-inspire you if you've lost your inspiration and I'm trying to share with you some amazing photography. Today, we strip away color. Today, we talk only about black and white photography. And maybe, just maybe, if you haven't made black and white photographs in a while, maybe today's episode is going to be the episode that makes you want to go out there and make some black and white pictures. All right. That was some photography from the amazing, amazing Alan Schaller. And Schaller is one of the masters of black and white street photography. If you have not seen the work of Alan Schaller, what are you doing? Go Google Alan Schaller and see the wonder that that man makes. All right. Let's get into some post-production as I share with you a recent shoot that I did over the last couple of days for a client. And although this is a color shoot, I want to just show you how you can take an image that would be typically a color picture and just make it black and white. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to just get that snap out of a black and white photo. Now, let me find what I think is a good one to start. Here we go. This is, I think, perfect. So I'm going to grab one of these photos from this particular set to make black and white. And I think it's going to be this-ish. Yeah, one of these, that's great. So we're gonna grab this shot. So 
in Lightroom, the first thing you can do is just touch the V key. V makes your photo black and white. So I push the V key. You can see this now converts this from a color to a black and white image. It just makes it monochrome. There's no adjustments. So we're going to go back to color and I'll show you where that is. We're going to push D for develop, which brings us into the develop module. And obviously I've already done color adjustments here. But up here, black and white, when you click that, that makes it black and white, which I just did with the V key. My next suggestion is make all your adjustments and make all your contrast adjustments and such here, exposure adjustments, just to make it feel right before you do the next thing that I'm going to show you. Now, if I wanted, I could definitely leave this photograph right here. I could definitely leave this photo right here and it would be more than fine, but I definitely want to do a little bit more. I still feel like the contrast needs a little bit more enhancement. So let's just get out of full screen mode. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna bring the highlights up a little bit you notice here we have nice white, black, and gray. I have detail in the shadows, detail in the pants, but possibly too much detail. So I'm going to pull that detail down just a bit. And you can see that increases the contrast just simply by me lowering, um, lowering the shadows. The shadows were cranked a little bit there. The next thing we're going to do is come down here. Now I'm going to, I like to do a little bit of vignetting, a little bit of post, um, post lens correction vignetting. So I'm going to pull that down to 100. I am also going to do post crop vignetting. I'm going to pull that down to like about 20. So you can see it really highlights my subject now. You're really focusing on just her. Now, because she's wearing different colors and I don't have a lot of separation between, between her shirt here and this and her hat. I'm gonna play with the black and white sliders just to see if I can get the bag to have a little bit of a differentiation, the sh um, her shawl and that, and to see what the hat looks like. So let's get into that. We do that with the black and white sliders right here. This is the black and white mixer. So we're just gonna pull, I'm gonna start with reds. You can see as I pull the reds down, I'm gonna focus in on her face particularly. You can see when I pull the reds down that any red on her face really like goes crazy. Red is where skin tones exist. And if you push the red up, it kind of does the opposite. So we're definitely not gonna do anything with the red. Orange is also very similar. You can see how much orange <laughs> affects the skin tone. So I'm not gonna mess with orange. Yellow is another one that definitely affects the skin tone. Um, it affects the background quite a bit as well, but I'm not going to touch the yellow as well. Now, let's make this just a little bit smaller so you can see what green does. As I pull green, you see how the dark, the background really darkens? So if I want those green leaves to render almost black, I can just pull this slider down a little bit. With aqua, there's not much on the aqua, and I'm pretty much thinking that there's not oh the blue definitely changes the tone of her shirt and that i don't want to mess with that too too much but it definitely helps a little bit so maybe we're going to pump this up to like 20 percent purple now purple because her bag is pink when we pull purple you can see how that's what I was looking for was something that would give me a different color for the bag, obviously, without going too crazy. So now when we look at the whole picture, when I take that away and then put that back in, you can see it just gives me just a little bit of color separation from that. The whole goal in the beginning was to get a little bit of separation between her shirt and the shawl, and it doesn't look like magenta is going to do it either. That just changes her lips. So overall, for me, that's pretty much where I, that's before, that's after. 
I'd pretty much stop there. It's a great way to really bring back the black and white, bring back the tones. Now I did that with a people picture because I'm a people photographer. Um, I think that this is the smart way to do it. And now that I have that adjustment, I can just select the rest of the shots in this set and then just sync my settings and it'll make all the rest of those shots black and white. So that's a couple of different ways as far as how I um, do the conversions in Lightroom. Now, I also said in the beginning how to pick shots that you would perhaps make black and white. And the reason that I chose this picture was because of the background. You can see just this great light background in contrast to this street scene, which I felt, again, I can make just do a quick black and white adjustment just to show you a fast adjustment. I feel like this might be a little washy, a little monochrome as I thought. And looking at this picture, it just, I could definitely bring something back here, but it's just not a picture that I feel like becomes stronger in black and white. And it's almost a colorless black and white. So I would keep that there. So that's the reason why that whole first set and you can see basically all of these are the same. And then into the green, that's the first thing that, yes, I would definitely pick to make um, black and white. And then later on in the session, there'll be something here. Now, the reason that this, I think, would work as black and white, it's because there's white, there's also black, and we have some green in the scene, so there are some cool tones. I'm gonna make the shot black and white just by clicking V, and you can see already there's something there. It's not quite right, it's a little bit light in exposure. Yes or yes, it's a little bit light in exposure. By the way, guys, if you have any questions about converting your images to monochrome. If you have any questions about any of the processing things that I'm doing right now, please feel free to ask me. If you're watching after the fact in the comments, I read all my comments and answer them all. And if you're watching this live, like you guys are right now, everybody in chat, feel free to ask, I'll happily answer. So you can see right here, just with simply dropping, dropping the blacks a little bit, dropping my exposure, a lot i'm starting to get into a picture the next thing again we're going to check vignetting and see if that vignetting is put on yet it is not so put a little vignetting there and a little bit more to just pull you into her now we're starting to feel like a picture that i like and then the next thing we'll use is these sliders and we already know um, red, definitely, if you want the lipstick to come back, you can see right there what red does to her lips. Um, it brings that lipstick, like, right back from looking neutral. Um, if necessary, we'll give her a little bit of lipstick there. The next orange, whoo, that definitely makes her skin look a little ghosty. Yellow does the same thing, I think. Um, gives a little separation of the background without much other change. We'll leave that. Now green, this is where we're going to darken that tree line behind her. You see how much nicer it looks from where it was in the middle to when I make that a little bit more dark and ominous. I quite like that. Aqua is not going to do anything. I don't think that there's any blue. Purple, it's a little highlight over her shoulder and likely the same with magenta. So that's just left with a little green and you can see what it looks like before and after. It just pulls in on her and I added just a little bit of lip color, which we could easily take away. That's it without the lip color change. Super simple, small things and small tweaks that you guys should be doing when it comes to making your photographs black and white. I don't want to stay on that too long because I could easily rabbit hole into this Lightroom library and just pick shot after shot. But if you guys have any questions, as I said earlier, please don't hesitate to ask. 
Let's get into something we like to call foundation. Now, when it comes to being an amazing black and white photographer, the only way to become an incredible black and white photographer is to study the looks, the works, the photography of the masters. You have to look at influential master black and white photographers like the mighty Ansel Adams. And Ansel Adams made photographs that, I mean, he invented the zone system, which was a way of breaking down every tone from white to black into a zone. And he made some of the most prolific photography in Yosemite never burning out highlights, never losing detail in his shadows. Ansel Adams is and should be all of our inspiration when it comes to landscape photography and black and white. Of course, you have to see the mighty Ansel Adams and also shooting with large format view cameras like this, the way that Sam McRae does. I mean, this is a, looks like an eight by 10 camera. Uh, he was a master and made photographs that we still look at, we still see today. It's important if you want to be inspired with black and white photography to look back, not look left and right, but look backwards and see photographers like Henri Cartier-Bresson, who was and one of the most prolific street photographers there ever was. Bresson and his decisive moment, street photography, changed, changed the way that street photographers saw photos. And I do believe this is one of those early photographs that I saw of Cartier-Bresson and this photograph here um, when I was in photography school and this photograph here, which is probably his most famous photograph. Bresson was the king of the decisive moment. And again, the medium of black and white just makes it so you don't see anything else except for the subject matter, the depth of field, what's on the paper all these distracting colors you just see them as clothing and it just forces you to see the faces so we're embracing black and white photography today we're really talking about the masters and of course Sebastio salgado salgado and his photography has influenced so many and keep in mind these award-winning photographs are all stripped from color, all monochromatic, powerful statement photographs. And I asked you earlier, I asked you earlier if your favorite photograph, the best photograph you've ever made, is that photograph a color photograph or is that photograph a black and white photograph? And then your favorite photograph of all time that exists out in the world. Is that a color picture or is that a black and white picture? Something for you to leave in the comments. I'm interested in your love of black and white photography and is your love of black and white photography as high as mine? I definitely, definitely appreciate the power of black and white photography. I hope you do too. So, as we look at the work of Ansel Adams, Bresson, and Salgado, those type of photographers and those type of images that you've shot, are they, which ones are your favorites? Um, Malcolm says that his favorite self-taken shots were edited in black and white. Vicky says for sure her favorite photos tend to be black and white. So um, Vicky says her Insta feed tends to be more black and white and you tend to lean towards black and white. So know that master photographers 
that's where that's where we should start looking as far as inspiration for our own black and white photography is looking at the masters but there's some incredible contemporary photographers and without me picking out any one photographer specifically if you just do a behance search on black and white photography the work that you see photographers contemporary photographers are doing in black and white is really pretty incredible and and again i hope you also agree that contemporary photography and look at how this photographer left this little hint of color right here and i don't know if you noticed that and that's just a little trick that you can do in your monochromatic photography is leave one little accent that's color i think that this work is incredible we are looking at the work of Gian Corato Donati. And again, a random photographer that I just pulled from Behance because the work felt strong. And Behance is just the place to look at this type of photography, whatever it is that you're searching. Just beautiful, minimalist photography. And again, whether this contemporary photography you love or hate, whether the photographers that I'm choosing right now to share with you, you love or hate, the thing that's most important is that they inspire you to actually go out and make your own photographs. And I do appreciate that you're here watching me, but the reason that I do these shows is so you go out with your camera and make photographs. And I love making content on YouTube. I do love sharing my knowledge on photography here in this platform, but I do know that what's as important as educating yourself on photography and getting yourself to speed, trying to level up your own work, you have to go out there and make it. You have to go out there and make photographs Whatever level you're trying to get, even if you're just trying to be a better photographer in general, that starts by shooting. Photography is an amazing craft where you actually get better every time you do it. It's like stand-up comedy, but you actually have to endeavor out there to make those photos. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes going out to make the photos is the hardest thing. Another random black and white story. Today, I really, oops, let's close this. Today, I really wanted to just share some beautiful photography. Okay, that was simple. What else is compelling me to click? This is a great story, great shot. I think it's time to break more rules, you know? I think it's time for us to have more fun with photography. I think it's time to really hang yourself out, take yourself far from your comfort zone, and just hang it out there. I really thought this was a full black and white story. We are looking at monochrome only today. We are looking at monochrome only. Wow. Wow, guys, look at this photograph. So great. The mood, the texture, the depth. I hope this inspires you. I'm super inspired to shoot black and white after today's episode. I hope you guys are too. And oftentimes I set my camera for monochrome. I, I set my um, picture profile for monochrome. Of course, I'm shooting raw. So anything that you shoot, any picture profile you shoot, you can just make it 
anything after. So I set my camera for monochrome so I can see my pictures in black and white as I'm making them. And even if later I decide to make that photograph color, at least when you're shooting it and removing removing that color, you're able to really see your composition, line, shape, form, all of the elements that make up a great photograph. And then at home, look at it in color and decide whether you think it should be a black and white or a color photograph. So Malcolm asked me this. Malcolm says, I don't re usually purposefully take black and white photographs. I don't intend to go black and white. But if it happens to be tried in an edit and it works well enough, then it becomes black and white. Is there any great shots that are a different combo than black and white for monochrome? I'm not sure if I really understand that last part of the question. Are there any great shots that are diff a different combo than black and white for monochrome? Um, yeah, I'm not exactly sure. Wow, what a picture. What you mean by that? If you can clarify, I'll see if I can answer your question, Malcolm, for sure. I really like this photographer. Ken Tanahashi. Super strong. Ken, oh, that's the one we just looked at. Ken Tanahashi. And again, for my own photographs, do I have a story on my Behance profile that's monochrome that I'm really, really happy with? Maybe. Let's see what I have. Yeah, I'm going to share a couple. This one I love. Now the photos, oh yeah, this I love. This is Ballet Dancer, is what this one is called. I really love this story. I think what Malcolm's asking is it's more of a, a duo tone or a split tone or using another color and white so it's not black and white maybe it's blue and white maybe it's red and white i think that looks very like andy warhol lithographic like that's kind of how art and pop art kind of moved into the scene i feel what you lose when you go into that realm, Malcolm, is you lose that classic and that timeless feeling. Black and white, and it's why I always make my black and white traditionally black and white. I don't do sepia tone. I don't do blue tone. I just straight black and white. It's just because of classic and timeless. I think that that's super important to be classic and timeless with your photography um i had so much fun shooting this girl the lines were just great and shooting in studio also great so that's one of my favorite black and whites and and funny enough most of my favorite black and white sessions are quite stark are at least black and white images like this is another it's quite stark. It has my light sensibility. You know, it's way more powerful as a black and white image than a color image. And if you look at some of the early shots, like in color, I just found that set in black and white. I just thought that it was just way stronger. So this is basically that same picture as back here you can see how much better i think it is in black and white it's fun looking at work from over 10 years ago it's kind of strange <laughs> but dope still um okay so and one last one last black and white that is super inspired this one's called conversed I really, really like this one too. 
It's just a girl in her converse. A little bit more art nude. This girl was so expressive too. She had so much fun with it. So expressive. You can have fun, you know? You really can have fun. And with black and white, again, it really just forces you to see just the subject matter. It forces you to look at nothing else. And whether you're shooting fashion, whether you're shooting landscapes, whether you're shooting product photography, there's always ways that you can strip away color. There's always ways that you can, I don't know. And, and this story it, in black and white just made it so much more powerful. And by the way, both models, both don't know each other. All of this is acting. This is acting. <laughs> They're not a couple. <laughs> this acting and direction, you know? Um, yeah, black and white. So powerful, man. And it, it's shooting light eyes. Somebody who has light color eyes is just incredible for black and white. Incredible. Some of my most powerful sessions and, and also the way that you can shoot in such a way that's almost black and white, that is like stripped from color. Like you can see this photograph here of mine is a color picture, but it's almost like, and now when you see the black and white and see the color, it's almost like it's colorless black and white. Seeing a black and white and seeing a color, you know, like you can shoot your color in a way that's almost stripped away from, like you can almost strip your color away. I should shoot more of this art nude stuff. What do you guys think? I haven't shot this type of work in quite a while. But again, it's like that stuff is just, it's almost like an exercise. Um, I don't really, or I hadn't sold prints. Maybe I'll shoot some art nudes and sell some prints. You guys let me know what you guys think of that type of photography for me. Kind of left it, to be honest, and stopped making that kind of work. But, you know, more of that will be happening soon. So I do believe there's a couple of things to look at in the Discord. Although, you know, as we get wrapped into the almost the end of this episode, I do do photo reviews Tuesdays and Thursdays. Sometimes there's no photos to review. Sometimes I like to save those reviews for a um, review only episode, but there are and maybe a couple of photo reviews in there. It's super easy to join the Discord. There's a link inside the video that you're watching right now in that video description. So definitely consider jumping into Discord. We got some new shots from Turtle, new shots from my brother. Um, all right, let's do this. My brother has spent 100 hours start to finish on this pencil drawing. This is the original photograph that my brother took when we both went to see Mama Cardi very recently. This is the photo. And my brother is an incredibly talented um, artist, um, airbrush artist, car painter. He does many things. And this is, I want to say, like one of the first pencil sketches that he's done um, since high school. This is Mom on Pencil by my brother, Leslie Cardi. Les, this is absolutely incredible. Like, so good. So, so, so good. You should be, I mean, come on. Look at the detail. It's, it's nuts. Like, it's so, so, so good, Les. You should be thrilled. Like, this is absolutely incredible 100 hours just working on that and also he 
would like to mention that he's working on doing better copy work. So that is also his copy. He made the copy. Les is growing some cannabis. Let's have a look at this flower. That is very, very green and freshy. Very great color here, Les. Nice little mist on the leaves. Obviously, I'd love to not see this upper part of the photograph here. Um, just because, you know, it would be great if we could end it right here. But that's all right. I know you shot it on your iPhone. and I mean, you shot it on your um, Android. And it makes your photos long and thin. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, that plant is gorgeous, my guy. Gorgeous. And what looks like some radishes, I guess. A nice detail shot of some radishes. I believe that he shot this on his cannon just because of the depth of field with Chalet holding these. This is really, really great. Great color, Les. Great color. I think the shutter speed is a little slow. You're getting a little bit of camera blur in here on some of your edges. That's just because there's a little bit of motion in the camera when you're shooting. With a 50 millimeter, you can't shoot at a slower shutter speed than a 50th of a second, irregardless of the aperture. So it's probably just a touch of camera shake. But again, like great color, great color, great idea, actually, with her like holding it like that. Just dope, dope, dope. What else do we have? We have, lastly, some new drone photography from our favorite aerial shooter his name is josh mccoy josh is in chat links for being here josh this is beautiful beautiful very frameable photograph very much true to your cross composition i love it graphically um design wise it's very great i really like this like you have this cross composition thing on lock josh like it's always the way that you can draw lines to your corners it's like it's pretty crazy like you you, you do this with such discipline this is um this is really great here oops um my shortcuts for this app are no longer working but this here it's not dead center but it is centered um meaning this piece right here I like it, man. The grass is a bit dead. I love how, how much order these plants have. This is a great photograph, Josh. There's nothing else to say. I love it. And it's actually, the tone is perfect. It's perfectly processed. It looks very much like, it looks very much like you adjusted this in black and white first and then brought the color back. Am I wrong? Um, because like the contrast in this photo is perfect. Really great job. Let's look at another from Josh McCoy. Wow, really nice tones here, Josh. Really nice tones. Um, I like this a lot. I like this a lot. Again, it looks like um, <laughs> Josh says always. So I taught Josh a processing technique where you strip away all the color using um, your color sliders down to a 100% negative and then you bring back colors. And then after you do that, you adjust your contrast with a black and white picture. You make a perfect black and white, and then you bring colors back. So this is dirt bike scene near his house. Really super sharp, super sharp. Like the details that you're seeing in here and the ground and the debris. Wow. It looks like you're really high up in this photo. Looks like you're really high up in this photo. I'm just trying to think like, if, is there like an ideal crop here? Is there an ideal way to crop this photo? I'm feeling, yeah, I'm feeling this needs like a, some sort of a bit of a crop, but again, I, I it's super strong. I like the first one a little better. This is definitely for me a little stronger. Um, but I definitely am feeling it, Josh, for sure. I'm feeling it. Let's see what else you have for me. Let's see what else you have for me. Oh, this is nice. Nice, Josh. Great leading line, my guy. Josh, again, this is, this is the kind, these are the kind of photographs this guy makes that just like, they hit big, like really strong picture, Josh. 
really strong picture. This sweeping river here, that kind of like, it, you're almost giving like a bullseye to the bottom of the frame. And then this leading line up here is so great. This patch here is tricky for me. I wonder whether this shot wants to rotate that way, which would still keep this arch on the bottom, but would cut this whole thing out and make this all monochrome up here. That's what I'm thinking about, Josh. That I mean, I know that you often reshoot these pictures, so this is my idea. You rotate the camera that way, so all your lines go straight in this way. And then that edge becomes the edge of your frame down here. And then this rounded loop should still be on the bottom. You know what I mean? I think that just, just aim up that way, you know, make it a vertical picture. Give it another try. I, again, it's super captivating and a very compelling picture to look at. So <laughs> I'm not by any means breaking balls. I'm just like, I always want to see new ideas. And this is almost like a great surveillance picture. I know I know that you've made this everything black and white except for this boat. This is a great way that you're able to fly your drone and like check on security for people, make sure that their property is safe and like that kind of stuff. Like I see this. I also see this with like surveying and like that kind of stuff. I'm trying to feel other than that where this particular fit, this particular pick fits within this set. I'm a little confused, but um, I definitely like the idea of making the boat color. Um, the fence is still going into the corner. Yeah, it definitely is. It definitely holds to your cross composition, Josh, for sure. For sure. I just, as a portfolio, I mean, a portfolio picture, no but a portfolio picture to showcase one of your 10 pillars that of business that you can do. Just ex help me ex understand a little bit more as to where that fits in. Guys, that was a little bit of real photo reviews. We do these Tuesdays and Thursdays when you guys submit. We have an active assignment happening right now, which is all about the fun on Sunday. If you guys didn't watch Sunday's episode, um, games photographers should play. That was a fun episode. I, I went through nine amazing challenges or like things that you can try in order to like respark the fun in your photography. Um, that episode runs hand in hand with this week's assignment, which is choose one of those nine crazy things that you can do and then shoot some photos and submit them in the discord here where we can all have a look. Um, please do the assignments. They're fun. They're fun. And this particular assignment is definitely going to sharpen your skills and make you. Yeah. If you haven't watched that episode, make sure you watch that one. Next, it will inspire you to go out and make pictures. It is Sunday's episode of Behind the Picture. Guys, that is another episode. Hope you enjoyed today. I enjoyed today. I really have wanted to do this ep episode on black and white photography for, I don't know, I've had this show notes, all this stuff sort of for a couple of months and I kept putting other episodes in front of it today black and white and I hope you guys enjoyed it I hope it inspired you to go out and make some black and white photographs if you do and are inspired to go out and shoot some black and white photographs make sure you submit them make sure you share them with me if you want to put them on instagram put them on instagram tag me just let me see that this episode inspired you to go out and make pictures and you know every time you do do that show up and go out there to make photographs you guys get better so keep doing that i will see you guys on sunday for another episode of behind the picture until then keep shooting stay love guys Thank you everybody who watched live. Thank you everybody who watched the VOD, who watched this after the fact. Leave a comment 
under this video. Make sure you tap it a like and let me know is your favorite photograph you've ever made color or is it black and white? And the favorite photograph that you've ever seen out there in the world, is that photograph color or black and white? Leave comments, likes, tell a friend if you like this kind of content. Appreciate you guys for watching.